<laughs> As you can see today, I have a camera and we're gonna be talking about photography today because this is also a science channel. We're gonna be talking about microscopy today. As I've mentioned a few times in some of my past videos or on my Instagram page, my husband is really into photography and through picking up some stuff from him, I've gotten a little bit into it as well. I bought this vintage camera from a store and actually repaired it myself. And as he was explaining things to me about photography, I was thinking, I'm trained in science. I've learned a lot about different microscopes over the years. I've used a lot of different microscopes over the years. Microscopes and cameras are basically the same thing. All right, there's a little bit of difference in them, uh, but today we're going to take a deeper look at microscopes and cameras and learn a little bit about why, how they're similar, how they're different, and how that all pertains to their ultimate goal. Cameras and microscopes are similar enough that a lot of famous camera companies that we think of, like Nikon, and if you're familiar with Leica, actually make their own microscopes as well. So there is a lot of crossover already between the microscope and camera world because they're using a lot of the same technology. So here I have, if I turn to my iPad, this is a picture of a basic compound microscope. Editing Brianna is now putting one over the screen right now. This is a picture of a basic film camera. Now, obviously, as you get into digitizing and more complicated microscopes and cameras, they diverge a lot, but they still contain a lot of the same equipment between the two. For example, sensors in digital cameras are very similar to ones that are put in like digital microscopes too. I had to learn a lot about different sensors for microscopes in my science classes in graduate school. So we're first gonna start off with the light source on a camera versus a microscope. So the light source for a camera is all of the light coming into the room and it comes into the room, it goes through all of the optics or like the lenses on the camera until it hits the film, which is currently loaded in my camera. And I can't show it to you because film is very sensitive to light. So when the film gets hit by the light, it takes that in information and changes it into a picture. That's how a picture in a film camera is formed, from all of the light hitting the film and forming the image. This is different from a microscope where the illumination source is underneath the set bolt that is to be seen and is shining up through the specimen to provide it and to backlight it. So the light from a microscope is actually supplied, whereas a light from a camera is the ambient light in the room. And this has to do with the two different goals for microscope versus a camera. In a microscope, you're trying to magnify or view a solid sample, not necessarily capture a picture of it, although they do attach cameras to microscopes to do so. While in a camera, you're trying to take a picture, so you need some way to record that light versus just using it to light up your sample. Because of this, another difference is that a camera will have a shutter in it, and the shutter in a camera should be closed. I don't think you can see it through my lens here, but when I first got this camera, the shutter actually wasn't closed, it was stuck. And that meant that all of the light coming in all at once was always gonna hit my film and just lead to it being completely blank or white because all of the lights hitting at the same time and there's no stopping it with a shutter. So I had to unstick my shutter and now my shutter only opens when I click down to take a picture. And in that brief moment, the shutter is open, the camera takes in light, forms the picture and then the shutter closed. This is blocking off any light or light from getting to the film. In a little bit of the same way, there is also light adjustment on a microscope that just changes um, how bright the light is but microscopes don't have a shutter because you don't necessarily need to block, oh, I just closed it. You don't necessarily need to block the light from coming into your sample um, in the case of just a basic visible light microscope. Next, let's talk about the way you're actually viewing your pictures. So in a camera, you have a viewfinder. My viewfinder is right here. Um, this is also a rangefinder camera, which means that it has a separate window in order to help focus it. And you're actually looking, if you could see the viewfinder and rangefinder on the front of the camera, you're actually looking straight through the camera as well to view your image. There are other cameras that are they're called a LSR or DSLR, yes, that use mirrors in order to flip the image coming in from your camera up to your eyes to see it. Whereas in a microscope, you have these eyepieces here, 
with lenses in them that allow you to see down into your sample. And some microscopes, depending on how they're operating, might also have mirrors that allow that as well. So we have the viewfinder on both a microscope and a camera that let you see your sample to begin with or your, the frame you're trying to capture. The next part I'm gonna talk about are the lenses on both a camera and a microscope. Well, hang tight, this is gonna get a little complicated, but I'll try to make it as concise and simple as possible. So there are a lot of lenses on both a camera or a microscope um, that all do different variations of focusing light, focusing an image. But in particular, I'm talking about this front lens on a camera and these objective lenses on a microscope. Let's talk about the microscope first since they're a little bit easier. The point of a microscope is to view really, really tiny things um, and make them bigger. So the lenses on a microscope are called objective lenses and they are simply like magnification lenses and the little, they'll be named by the amount they'll magnify. And they're on a rotating stage so you can rotate them around to view different objects at different magnifications. So you would view like the nucleus inside of a cell at a much higher magnification than you would want to view the cell itself. So these, the objectives, rotate around and change the magnification that you're viewing your microscope sample with. These, I think, are a lot more straightforward than a camera lens. Camera lenses are a little bit more complicated to explain the way they work. You'll often see a camera lens that has a like number on it. So for example, where is mine? This mine says 44 millimeters on it. That is called the focal length of this lens. And to understand focal length, we have to understand a little bit more about how lenses work. So lenses work by basically focusing light in at a point. So taking all the incoming light, it passes through the lens and it focuses at a point. So that's the converging point of focus that is the most focused point of all of that light. And then when it goes through that point, it will spread back out again. The focal length for a camera lens is the theoretical length between that point of convergence, that point where all of the light rays are at the same point, the most focused image, and where the sensor is located on that camera while the camera is focused at infinity. That's a really fancy way of saying, if I focus my camera all the way to focus something at very far in the distance, how far away is that point of convergence or a point where all of those points are together, that very focus point, away from my film, or if in a digital camera, my camera sensor. Um, different types of glass, different materials, different curvatures of lenses, all will affect how it bends light through them and focuses the information coming at it and will change focal length. So it's a very, <laughs> It's, I mean, people study optics or the like study science of lenses as their entire career. So there's a lot that goes into it. And my camera is able to focus through different, um, is able to focus through different lengths or distances. So if you see here, <laughs> leaning really in, there's different numbers that represent feet and you focus and move it to the distance away your object is. And if you can see when I'm moving this, my lens is moving in and out because it's changing how far away that lens is from the sensor in order to focus better. Because in a photograph, your object is moving, it's a different distance away from you, and you need to focus your lens and move your lens position in order to focus your object depending on how far away it is from you. Whereas in a microscope, remember our microscope, your sample is on a stage. So you have your coarse and fine adjustment knobs on the side of your microscope that move the sample up and down in relationship to these objective lenses. So in a camera, you move your lens to accommodate a moving object. And in a microscope, you move your object to accommodate a standing lens. And that's how you focus both of those things. That was a lot of information. Hopefully my diagrams about lenses helped you. And I'm gonna move on to the last thing I'm gonna talk about between microscopes and cameras, just for the sake of a concise video that is hopefully easy to understand. And that has to do with aperture and something called depth of field. So aperture has to do, um, and is controlled by, on a microscope, this diaphragm and condenser right here underneath the sample. 
and you can open or close that aperture in order to let in a different amount of light or a different like width of light through the sample. The same thing happens on a camera and it's controlled by this ring here and you can't actually see my aperture anymore because I finally fixed the shutters. You're not supposed to see your aperture, but I'm putting a picture in right now, hopefully, of the aperture of my camera before I fixed the shutter when I had it all opened up. And that controls the amount of light that is able to be let in. So you want to change your aperture depending on how much light is in the room sometimes. So if you have like, a, if it's really dark outside, you want to open up your aperture a little bit more in order to get more light coming into your camera to fill the thing, to fill your image. The other thing that aperture changes is your depth of field. So your depth of field has to do with how far apart two objects that are clear enough to be acceptable are. So for example, if I am standing here, but the table behind me is still in focus, my depth of field would be the distance between me and the table. It means how many different things of different depths in a photo are still clear or in an image on a microscope are still clear. And I will be flashing up some comparison photos, hopefully, of me at different depths of field so you can see that difference. So the aperture contains depth, controls depth of field, and that number on a camera is written in terms of um, an f-stop value. So you might also hear aperture in the photography world referred to as f-stop. And whenever my husband says, yeah, so the f-stop of my camera, and I'm like, did you mean the aperture? I'm speaking in microscope terms here. And so the f-stop is these numbers represented down here. And that has to do with the ratio of how, it's a measurement of how open is your aperture to the focal length of your lens. So the smaller your f-stop, actually the more open your lens is, and you're going to get a really shallow depth of field. So a smaller f-stop, really open aperture, the front part of your picture is gonna be in focus and the background is gonna be blurry. A higher f-stop or smaller aperture, you're gonna have a lot more depth in focus. So for example, like I would be in focus and my background would also be in focus. So that's a little bit about f-stop and aperture on microscopes and cameras and how it controls depth of field. It's very important for microscopes if you're trying to view different parts of a three-dimensional sample and you want more of it to be in focus at a time versus focusing on a specific layer. That was a tremendous amount of information. And if you need to go back and rewatch this, please do so, I understand. And clearly microscopes and cameras have different pieces and parts to them, um, in addition to the ones they have in similarity because they have different goals. So a microscope, you know, is gonna have a stage to hold the sample, stage clips to hold the sample, movement to the stage in order to move your sample around because you're working with something, an object that is mounted on a glass slide, staying in one place, and you need to be able to move it to see different parts of it. A film camera is gonna have uh, this film advancer area, and it's gonna be able to rewind the film when you're done with it and take the film out and develop it. It also has a setting for shutter speed, so that's how fast or slow the shutter opens. There are different parts to them just because they're doing different things, but all in all, the same science, that science of light or optics and how they move is the same between a microscope and a camera, which I personally think is really fun. I hope you think it's fun too. <laughs> Today's fun fact that we're going to rate is that if you take a photo with a camera, it's called a photograph. But if you take a picture with a microscope, it's actually called a micrograph. So be sure to drop that rating for how fun that fun fact is in the comments below on a scale of one to 10 like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, go out and take pictures or work with microscopes, or just learn more about them if that's what you like to do. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I like to post some various science-y things that I'm doing on Instagram, like how I was developing film a couple weeks ago. I post on every Tuesday and Friday, and please remember to always keep it science-y. <laughs> Thank you.